Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with Online Security, and we are back with another Cert Master Lab for Security Plus 701. If y'all have been enjoying this series as much as I have, please don't forget to smash that like button. Please don't forget this tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend that Online Security is the place to come and learn the fundamentals. In this lab right here, we're going to be going over the use case of automation, right? Automation and scripting. If you're not familiar with it by now, Right, automation, we're just automating manual tasks. Scripting, we use scripts to automate those tasks. Let's go ahead and dive into this so we can get a better understanding from a hands-on perspective. So first things first, after you log in, you know the username, you know the password. We're gonna open up this terminal. Okay, and we're gonna curl this IP address, which is just our loopback IP for this threat feed. Right, and here's a bunch of malicious IPs that we want to block on our firewall. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can manually do this with this command right here using IP tables. IP tables is a firewall application on Linux, right? You can use this right here to go ahead and manually block all of these IPs, right? So what this is gonna do is just drop all connection from this IP range coming to us, coming from coming inbound, right? You can do this, right? You can go ahead and do it for the rest of them. Let's look at that rule, right? We can see that the rule was added here, right? But we need the rest of these block, right? And instead of this doing and doing this manually individually, what we can do is use a script that is going to do that. So we're going to cat open this script. Here's a script that's going to do that for us. It's going to add those IP addresses to our IP table is going to block it. So it's going to say, hey, for each of those IP addresses, this is what I want you to do. Well, first it's going to retrieve the list, right? It's going to retrieve the list. It's going to do what we did. It's going to go ahead and retrieve that list from evilip.feed. Then for each IP, we want you to run this command. We want you to put the IP here. The same command we run, IP table dash A, input dash S. This is the source IP. The action we want you to do, dash J, is drop. It's going to do that for us instead of us trying to individually do that. All right, before we run that command, if you also wanted to add a rule to IT, IP tables to drop outbound packets, which of the following lines could be added? It's going to be this guy right here, right? This is going to block outbound traffic. Now we're going to make our file executable because right now, if you look at it, it is not an executable file, right? It's just a normal text file. So what we're going to do is shamad plus x to make it executable. If we look at it again, it is now highlighted. We can actually run it. So let's go and run it. We're going to do dot forward slash and then the name of the script. Boom, it's running it. Now let's look at our IP tables again. With IP tables space dash capital S, you can see that everything has been added. But look at the issue. We have duplicates in here. We don't want to have duplicate entries doing the same thing in our firewall. So we have to fix this script to remove those duplicates. So what we're going to do, or actually, I don't know if they're too concerned about the dupes. Uh, yeah, they are. So, but we're going to, we're going to work our way over there. So let's go ahead and automate this, right? We automated it with a script. Now we're going to have this script run every day at 1 a.m. with a cron job. We're going to have this script run every day at 1 a.m. with the cron job. So we're going to go ahead and do that echo. We're going to echo this to the cron job. Boom, boom, boom. Then bash. We're going to use bash to run this script. The script is under the root directory and the name of the script is block.sh. We wanted to run that script and add it to the cron jobs. Boom. If we hit enter and then type in cron tab dash L. We can see that it is now a scheduled job. Cron job is what Linux uses to schedule different jobs. Right now we're scheduling this script to run every day at 1 a.m. All right, now we're gonna update this feed. Right here, the script that we have to update the feed is gonna pull new updates, right? New IP addresses to be blocked, right? All right, now we ran that. Let's go ahead, we updated the feed. Now let's go ahead and run our script again, update feed is gonna do what? It's gonna update our threat feed with new IP addresses. Now let's go ahead and run the block against those IP addresses. 
Cool. Now let's go ahead and look at our IP table. All right. We're seeing some more, but keep in mind, we're still seeing those duplicates again. We're seeing a few duplicates. All right. So we got to fix that, right? We, we got to fix that. We don't want duplicates in our firewall. So to fix that, we have to edit the script. So we're going to Vim open this script and we're going to go to the bottom of the line. You can just use your arrow to go to the bottom. I'm going to use, well, I don't want to confuse you. I'm just going to do what I normally do. Right. If you just type, use your arrow to get to the bottom, but if you just type capital G O, it's going to bring you to the bottom and actually put you in insert mode. But if you used your arrow to get to the bottom, come all the way down, then you'll probably get stuck right here. Hit I come over, enter. Now you're at the bottom. All right, cool. So what we're going to do is add this to our script. This right here is going to remove duplicates. Oh, I'm going to go down here and move that extra line. All right. So now this is going to remove the duplicates. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. You can either hit shift colon WQ. I won't tell you the other one right now, but there are other ways that you can exit out of them. I don't want to confuse anybody. So now this is what the script should look like, right? We should just simply add this towards the bottom so we can go ahead and remove the duplicates. Let's score that. You can go ahead and look at the script, make sure it looks exactly how it needs to look like, and then we're going to run it. Boom. Now let's go ahead and look at our IP tables. The duplicate entries have been removed. Right. Duplicate entries have been removed. Good job. You created, you automated another script here, right? We edited, we had a script. Well, first of all, we were manually updating our IP tables. IP tables is just a firewall. We were manually updating our IP tables to try to block certain threats, threat IPs that we got from a threat feed, right? We wanted to block this malicious IP. We did that manually instead of blocking every individual on an individual IP man manually. What we did was create a script that's going to do that for us. We also have a script called update feed that is getting new feeds for us instead of us trying to do it individually, right? This is the power of automation, the power of scripting. All right, let's go to the next section. Now we're going to automate the, the removal of malware. So we're going to curl 127, but this time we're going to curl for bad hashes. Right, we're going to curl a feed for bad hashes. Plenty of websites, Microsoft, Blue Coats, all these different vendors, they provide these feeds. Right now, this is local, right? But in the real world, you'd be getting these feeds from a vendor, a well known vendor. All right, so we see this feed of mal hashes. Now, what we want to do is hold on one second. Let's let me keep track of where I'm at really quick. All right, so. Let's go ahead and look at this script. We're going to look at this script called remove here. I'll show you the script first. It is right here. Remove malware.sh. Let's go ahead and look at that script with the less command. So we don't see everything come out to the screen. We're just going to use less to see uh, just a little bit of the information because it's a large script. Now what this script is going to do is going to look at that, that malware hash, right? That the hash feed that we're getting It's going to look at that malware. It's going to look at the hashes. It's going to look at the file names and it's going to determine if we have the same files and the same hash hashes on our system. If we have have hashes of that file and the same file name on our system, this script is going to remove it, right? This script is going to remove it. So one more time, here's some hashes right here. And on the right hand side, these are the names of those programs. What this remove malware.sa script is going to do is analyze our system for this hash and this and this name. If it matches, this remove malware is going to remove that script. All right. Now, if I go back into that script we were looking at, you can see that it's using a SHA-256 sum to get the hashes. It's using SHA-256 to get the hashes. That is what we're using to vet to validate the integrity of these applications. All right. Now what we got to do is edit this. Okay. We got to edit this script because th this is going to take too long. Um, 
Here, I'll show you. Let's open up the script first. We're going to then remove malware.sh. If you go down to line 32, all right, just keep scrolling down. You should see the numbers right here changing. If you come down to line 32 and hit I, I want you to come all the way over to find, right? This is this find and this is saying find everything under our system, everything. So this script is going to look through the entire file system to see if the file names and the hashes match, right? We don't want it to look through the entire file system. That's going to take too long. So we're going to tell it what to look at which is going to be user share. That is the location we want this script to look inside of the user share directory. All right. We don't want it to look throughout the entire system. Simply leaving this is telling the script to look through the entire system. That is going to take too long. So we're going to switch. That's the only change we're going to make here. So hit escape shift colon WQ save it. That is it. We're only changing that we're adding user share instead of just the entire directory. All right, cool. Go ahead and score that. We look at the script. We can't execute it right now. If you try to execute it, remove malware that sh, it won't work. It's not executable. If we just type remove, remove malware that sh, it won't work. It's not executable. We have to make it an executable. So we're going to use the shamad command. Shamad is what we use to change permissions of a file. We're going to change that, make it executable. Look at it now. Now it's executable. Now we can run it. Let's go ahead and run that. So this is going to go and scan that directory that we told it to scan. It's going to scan the user share directory to see if the hashes and files inside of that malware feed exist on our system. If it does, it is going to go ahead and remove it for us. Okay, it is going to go ahead and remove it for us. We are creating a script to do this instead of you trying to manually find these malicious hashes instead of you trying to manually find these malicious file names to 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 find if they exist and remove them manually. We are going to automate that process. This is the power of automation. This is the power of scripting. All right. So what bad files did it found? It said um so delete it we want to see the ones that were deleted netcat.exe was deleted keylogger.exe was deleted those file names and hashes matched what was in that threat feed All right i want you to take some time to just look at these results but we're going to move on to the next section all right what malicious files were found and removed that's going to be this keylogger.exe in this exact directory. Just make sure you pay attention to the directory it's in. It's under user share windows resources binary. And then netcat.exe under the same directory. And we can confirm that those files were removed. Let's go look at the directory they were supposed to be in. They are no longer here. You don't see the netcat.exe. You don't see the keylogger.exe. Cool. Now let's automate this script. We want this script to run every day at 2 a.m. We're going to automate this script. Same thing we did with the other script. We're going to automate it. This is going to run every day at 2 a.m. Boom. We can go and look at our cron job. We should have this job in there now as well. Go ahead and score that. Now, if you're not familiar with cron jobs, if you're not familiar with the, the syntax, that is fine. I believe in the previous section. Yeah, they have the. They had this detailed here in the previous section so you can get familiar with it. It's also a lot of cool cheat sheets on Google to help you with that as well. All right, let's move on. Question, what command is used to add a firewall rule to block inbound? There's only one on here that's blocking inbound. It's going to be this input. Okay, sweet. Next question, which of the following commands will configure the system to automatically exec execute a script weekly? It's going to be this one right here. All right, that is going to execute the script weekly. What does the command shaman plus X do? It's going to set 
the thought to be executable by everybody. Based on the malware removal script used in this lab, which of the following would result in a file being removed from the system? The file name and, and hash both matching the value from the threat feed. Yes. What issue must be addressed when automatically adding IP block rules from a threat feed? Duplicate rules. You don't want to have duplicate rules in your firewall. Y'all, this was a pretty cool lab. We got to get some scripting skills in. We got to get some automation skills in. These are very useful, 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 real hands-on skills. You got to interact with IP tables, which is used in a lot of organizations. Please get familiar with these skill sets. Please do not want and done these labs. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section. We are here to help you win. That's what this community is about. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Come learn with us. Peace. I'll see you all in the next section.